years ago when we were doing soil tests on our farm, we realized, ooh, we don't have a lot of boron in the soil. And I just thought, well, how much so do what? you really need? Exactly, so what? Well, the problem then was we were also doing some plant tissue analysis and sample after sample after sample, we kept coming up deficient on boron. That's not a good thing. Well, kind of, Brian. You know, early in the season, if you're short on boron, how much boron do you really need in the early season? You need it mostly around pollination time yep. and right around reproductive phases of most crops. And with boron, it's one of those nutrients, and here's one of the unique things about it, it's actually leachable. It's one of those nutrients that can move down with water in your soil. So maybe you get some rains in the spring, it pushes the boron down a little bit, you still got a shot of getting it back later or reaching that level where the boron is with your roots. But do you really want to take a chance? So what I always talk to people about is with nitrogen, for example, you would never even think about planting corn or wheat without adding nitrogen to the field, would you? Well, it's kind of the same deal with boron. Why do you have to put nitrogen out every time you're gonna raise those grass crops? Because nitrogen will leach down in the soil. You know it's gonna be gone if you don't use it that year, right? Same thing happens with boron in a lot of cases. This is something you should be fertilizing with every year, Yet, as farmers, we think about NPK, NPK. How many people think about putting boron out on their fields every year? I'd get a lot of laughter at a farmer meeting if I bring that up. Well, you know, some farmers do actually think about boron, Brian, and it's mostly the alfalfa growers. Because alfalfa growers understand that boron is very important to raising a good alfalfa crop. When I was just getting started as an agronomist, uh, one of my customers said, you know, yeah, I'm getting some fertilizer put on my alfalfa today, and and I'm having the guys add in some boron. And I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. And he was telling me about how important it was in his alfalfa crop. And I knew a little bit about it, but, but it was interesting to hear it from somebody who was really passionate about the issue. And anyway, I talked to him, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later and I, I said, all right, you know, how, how are things going? He goes, oh man, you won't believe this. I killed a bunch of my alfalfa. And I said, what happened? Did you spray some Roundup over there or, or what, what actually killed it? He said, well, remember that boron I was telling you about? Yeah, the company that I was gonna have put that on, they just dumped a bunch of boron in with the rest of my fertilizer and the boron was real small and the rest of the fertilizer pellets were kind of big. The boron shifted all down to the bottom of the spreader and the first hundred yards coming out uh, at the start of my field was all the boron. It was so much boron it actually killed my crop. It was toxic to my crop at that high level. Well, everything that was going to go on a hundred acres of alfalfa went on a hundred yards instead. <laughs> Yes, you can't have too much of a good thing. So I've used Darren's story exactly when I've been training young agronomists and I just said, okay, think about what I've told you now with boron. We know it's leachable. And so if you had a whole bunch of boron that ended up on a hundred yards of a particular field, what should you do? Well, when you think about it just a little bit, all you really need to do is just, just try to flush that down with water. If you can get that down below the root zone, you hopefully should be able to keep your alfalfa going. Well, you've got that, or you've got another choice. You've got a, a dead strip there, 100 feet long and 50 feet wide, the, the width of that spreader. Well, all he could have done too is gone in and just scraped off the top three or four inches of that yep. soil and spread it out across the whole field. Now he's taken all that boron and spread it out evenly over the whole field. If you could do that, that would be another alternative and, and something positive so you can move forward right away. So when you look at boron, we don't want you to just go throw some boron pellets in with a whole bunch of other dry fertilizer and have what Darren described happen to you. In a lot of cases, you're gonna be looking at liquid alternatives with boron. Well, and with the liquid alternatives, Brian, a lot of times you'll see a blend of micronutrients. And this is one thing that's really important. When you're talking about micros, yeah, you can throw out straight zinc. And there's a lot of guys that say, oh, I'm gonna throw straight zinc on my corn. And now that we're doing more plant tissue analysis and many farmers across the country are using that technology too, they say, wow, I'm short on zinc and boron. So I'll throw a little zinc and a little boron in and I'll be good. Well, yeah, you can do that, but the consistency of your results is almost always better when you're using a blend of micronutrients. It's, it's kind of like if there's one piece of pizza, uh, if I eat it all, Brian gets none and now we've got a problem and Brian's hungry. But if we can split it and do it right and blend it together, hey, everything works out fine. Well, I don't think one piece of pizza between the two of us would cut it, Darren. Well, maybe one but... pizza. How about that? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so here is exactly what we want you to do. First of all, we want you to understand how much boron each crop you're raising takes. You're going to find that out if you go to the agphd.com website, go to our resources tab. Otherwise, you can download the fertilizer removal app. It's a free app that we've got at AgPhD. You can download that uh, at the App Store on iTunes. Once you've done that, we want you to soil test, we want you to use plant tissue analysis, and we want you to strongly consider using at least a little bit of boron every single year because boron is leachable. Well, the other thing you need to do every single year is control our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 